I guess it's time I finally fill y'all in on what happened with this trailer. Well, as you can see, I've got brand new fenders on this thing and they just got welded up and installed. And uh, it's time for me to rip this thing apart and go ahead and start painting the fenders and make sure everything's good to go. And while I'm doing that, I figured I'd go ahead and tell you what happened with the trailer. Well, I had a customer come pick this trailer up for a seven day rental. And when he picked the trailer up, he was all busted up. Uh, he looked like somebody got a hold of him or he had a terrible accident. He had bandages on his face, on his cheeks. He had swollen hands all wrapped up. He had literal active wounds on his face. And he told me he'd had a concussion because he fell off some scaffolding and rolled down some stairs and all kinds of crazy stuff. But I felt really bad for the guy. Um, but he, he was genuinely busted up. Well, anyway, he rents the trailer from me. I made sure he was good to drive and all that kind of stuff. But he just looked really bad. He said he had a concussion that was kind of messing up the way he was talking, things like that. Well, we hook up, everything goes great, and uh, he pulls off. Nothing to worry about. So the fella gets on his way. I don't think anything of it. Everything's going fine. But then I check the GPS. And when I check the GPS, I noticed the trailer hasn't moved in about four days when I checked the GPS, because it had been gone for, at that point, about six days. So I was just checking up on it, you know? Well, I start reaching out to the guy to try and find out what's going on and just make sure everything's okay, make sure the trailer's gonna be back when he said it was gonna be back. Because <laughs> I got other customers that are, you know, scheduled and that sort of thing. Well, nothing. I can't get in touch with him. I can't do anything. I have no idea what's going on. But I'm like, you know, he paid for seven days. I'll wait till seven days, all good. Well, I check my GPS and I find out where the trailer's at, you know, officially. And when I can't get in touch with the guy, after a couple of days of it should have been back by now, I already canceled with the other customer because I kind of had to. And uh, I didn't know what was going on and I can't get in touch with him. So I look it up on Street View to find out where it's at. Is that a place, uh, well, I won't name the place, but it's at a body shop. It's also like a towing yard and a uh, scrap yard and that sort of thing. And uh, clean Mustang. And uh, I look it up and I realize there's fences and there's trees and everything, I'm not gonna be able to see it. So I fly my drone over the fence. I drive up there super late at night, fly my drone open over the fence to find the trailer. And I'll tell you what, my Lynx Up GPS, not sponsored by the way, but my Lynx Up GPS put me within five feet of the trailer. I mean, just perfect, on point. And so <clears throat> I fly the drone over there, check it out, see all kinds of damage on it, which would be the damaged jack, the busted up fender, even more than it already was. We already knew there was some damage before, um, but not this much damage, um, as well as a couple other things that I noticed. And so I knew where the trailer was at. So I drive around to the front of the building after I get my drone back, call the number that's on the sign, and I get the on-call driver, which is the, the, happened to be the same tow truck driver that picked the trailer up and brought it in, and he told me everything that was going on. You had to go pick up the truck and trailer because you got arrested? Yeah, some, something happened off a of Yellow Bluff Road. He got picked up, uh, well, we, I picked up, the, I didn't take his actual truck, but I, he had a, he was, he had bought a brand new charger and he had the charger on the trailer and I went and picked up the uh, trailer and the charger and he came today to pay for the charger for the actual car to get the car home and then he said he's coming by Friday when he did his truck from out the impound I had another uh, dealer and when they pick on he picked up his truck he said he was coming to pick up the trailer so he could turn it back in got it okay and he said he was planning on doing that Friday yeah, because he got to go, go get his truck. But another company told his actual truck that was all in the trailer on him. Wow, okay, got you, man. So he got to go, go pay for him. He got to go pay them to get out and get all his stuff to get there. Now, I think it's important to note that I am in no way, shape, or form an expert of this kind of stuff. I did take auto body when I was in high school, and I learned some basics. But otherwise, it's YouTube, trial and error, and... Uh, not caring if it comes out perfect or not. I think that's probably a, a, a big one. Uh, and also just wanting to save money. I'm not gonna go pay a company to do this when I can half-ass do it myself. You know what I'm saying? So here's what ended up happening. When the customer picked up, he went and then swapped vehicles. And what he did was he ended up picking up a rental truck from another company and when he swapped vehicles, he didn't hook the trailer up properly. I don't know if it was just he didn't put the safety pin in, the whatever, I don't know. He goes and picks up a brand new car that he had bought, puts the car on the trailer, and because he's not thinking clearly because of his concussions, he thinks, I don't have to strap this car down. I'm just going around the corner, it'll be just fine. Well, clearly it wasn't. 
The inevitable happens. Car shifts on the trailer because he hit a bump, which then throws the car into this fender, which then flies backward on the trailer, lifting the trailer up, throwing it off the truck, and then shoving the whole trailer into the tailgate of the truck. And then, of course, comes out, slams into the ground, messes the jack all up, uh, hits the toolbox. Um, there's all kinds of like crazy things that happened to it when this happened. And so he pulls off to the side of the road. When he pulls off, the police pull up to lend a hand. Well, because he's so concussed and he's so out of it, he can't pass a sobriety test. They think he's drunk, which I understand because I thought things were a little off with him when he picked up. But I was like, ah, whatever, you know. He seemed okay. I'm not a cop. I'm not trained to tell that. Whatever. Take the trailer. He ends up trying to explain it to him. Can't explain it to him. They, they don't care. They take him downtown and arrest him for DUI. And when he gets downtown, they give him a breathalyzer test and he blows zeros. No alcohol. Nothing on his breath. Period. Blows zeros. And he's like, I tried to tell you. I just had a concussion. I'm all messed up. Yada, 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 yada. Um, and apparently it was, he says it was the second concussion within a couple of days, whatever. Well, anyway... Uh, or a couple of weeks, excuse me. Fast forward a couple days later after I talked to the tow yard, the, the driver, and he tells me what's going on. I get a call from the customer. I'm like, hey, what's up? You know, I had already found his arrest record and everything and kind of knew what was going on. Well, he calls and he tells me everything. He told me the whole story. I was like, okay, that's all good, man. But you know, you've already had the trailer a couple extra days. How do you want to proceed? What's going on? He's like, I still need the trailer. I have two other cars that I purchased and I've got to move them and yada, yada, yada. I said, okay, well, meet me at the tow yard and we'll take a look at it together. We'll discuss all the damage. We'll discuss how much longer you need it, the whole nine yards. I meet him there a couple days later and we look at it. We see all the damage, you know, and I discuss it with him and he says, I need it for one more week, which would have put him through January 4th. So he takes out his wallet and he says, can I give you cash? I said, of course, no problem. He says, I'll take, I'll drop it off somewhere or I'll fix it myself. One of the two, no matter what, everything's getting fixed. I said, okay, great. He goes to hand me cash. He says, how much is going to be? I said, $800 you know, $600 for the rental. I'm going to collect another deposit from you. Um, we'll discuss the other days and yada, 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 whatever. So he goes to hand me money and he says, here's $800 and he hands it to me. And I'm like, fellow, this is $260. That's all that you gave me. He's like, oh, how much more do I need to give you? And I said, and I told him how much. And he starts taking more money out and he hands it to me. He goes, there you go. And I said, all right, that was only $20 more. And I'm realizing how messed up in the head the guy actually is. He's, he's actually got some serious problems. Like he can't count money. He can't remember things. He can't think straight. He can't think clearly. Um, and I'm starting to feel really bad for the guy. And um, the place where we're at is the towing yard is a cash only place. And I just realized I just took every bit of cash that he had. So he says, okay, well, I'm going to run to the ATM, get money out, 350 bucks at that time to get the trailer out. I'll pay them. I'll handle all my business with the trailer and I'll get it back to you on the 4th unless I need it longer and I'll call you and I'll give you a credit card, whatever. I said, okay, awesome. Sounds good. We go our separate ways. Well, fast forward one hour, I get a phone call from this customer and he says, Hey, Justin, I'm so sorry to bother you, but, um, I can't remember. I, I need a little help. Did I pay the scrapyard or the towing yard? Did I pay those people? I said, no, sir, you didn't. You, uh, were on your way to the ATM to get cash. Uh, last time I saw you and you were going to go back and pick it up. He says, oh, okay. Okay. And you already signed everything saying they can release it to me. I said, yeah, it's all good. Mind you, he's saying this very slowly. I hang up, fast forward five minutes, he calls back. Justin, I'm so sorry, I, I just, I'm having such a hard time. I said, okay, what's, what's up? He says, these people are telling me I didn't pay them. I said, that's, that's correct, you, you didn't pay them yet. I didn't? No, sir, you didn't. And he's like, oh, wow, okay, I'm all over the place. Thanks so much for your help. Nicest guy in the world, but he's just having a really rough time. And so, that was the last that I heard from him. Okay, so I keep checking the GPS. I'm paid up through the fourth. I'm good. I keep checking the GPS and it's not moving. The trailer's not going anywhere. I decide I'm going to call up there. So I call up at the tow yard. I'm like, hey, have y'all heard from him? Yeah, he calls every day saying he's gonna come pick it up. Never picks it up. I keep trying to call him to make sure he's okay. No answer, no nothing. No text, no email, no phone response, nothing, no, no nothing. So finally the fourth rolls around on a Thursday and I drive up there and I say, Hey, have y'all heard from him? They said, we haven't heard from him in a few days. I can't get in touch with him at that point. I have to fork over what is now $650 to get the trailer out of impound. I checked obituaries. I checked hospitals. I checked the, um, the jail. 
I can't find a thing about the guy uh, anywhere. I can't tell if he's been arrested again. I can't tell if he died or if he's in the hospital. I have no idea what's going on with him. And I'm actually a little concerned about him, to be totally honest with you, because he's a nice, nice guy, but he's all messed up. He needs someone to help him out. He can barely count money. He can barely remember anything. So I hope he's okay. So what I end up having to do is I end up calling the insurance company. I let them know what's going on. I file a claim, send them pictures of all the damages. I send them invoices for everything, letting them know how much everything's costing, how much the repairs are going to be, how much the whole thing. They're going to give it one week to find out, uh, to try and get in touch with the customer. If they can't get in touch with them because they haven't been able to so far, if they can't get in touch with them by tomorrow, which will be Friday the uh, 12th of January, then um, at that point, a manager is going to kind of rule on the decision to proceed or to not. And then after that, they're going to review all the stuff that I gave them and then give it another week. If they don't hear from them by then, then they're going to make a ruling on whether or not they're going to approve everything. So that's kind of where it's at. You know, guys, I'm just a trailer junkie, but I'm not a painter, but I think it came out okay for what it is. I mean, I definitely got a little overzealous in my, um, the first portions of primer. You can see a little bit of drip from the primer, but everything else came out okay. And you know what? This is something that's gonna get beat up constantly by customers, so if I have to, I can just grab a row can and just hit it up real quick. Good as new, I think it's just fine. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching the content, check everything out. I'm gonna start a Patreon here soon, guys, so be on the lookout for that, so that way I can put some really specific, in-depth type stuff. Um, I've also been doing the consultations, helping people get started. That's been going really well, and I really appreciate everybody trusting me to help you out with that. So if you wanna check that out, trailerhustle.com. I've got a blog on there where I talk about the ins and outs of this business, but I'm gonna get really, really specific in, in really great detail on the Patreon when we get that launched. That's gonna be about a month. So uh, be on the lookout for that. I really appreciate everybody that supports the cause here. Truckandtow.com, be sure to go check those guys out. Um, they've been making sure that I'm set up with all the straps that I need. I've got that giveaway coming up soon too for a set of Vulcan Pro Series straps. So be sure to stick around for that. Um, I finally am getting around to the point where I can get some stuff done. So thank you guys very much. I appreciate everything. And by the way, thank you to all the other trailer renters out there that have posted content that have allowed me to grow and expand my business and learn from y'all's mistakes, learn from y'all's successes. Um, and networking with each other. It's been, it's a great community and all of you guys that are watching this video that wanna get involved in this community, please do it. Reach out to me, info at trailerhustle.com and uh, I'll help you get started. And there's a lot of guys out there that are willing to help and uh, give you all the resources needed. So hit us up, appreciate you guys. We'll catch you on the next video. Guys, it's almost 2 a.m. and I'm in the middle of editing this video. I'm kind of at the tail end. You're not gonna believe what happened. As I'm making this video, I get the phone call from the guy, the guy I'm talking about in this video. And you know what just happened? He asked me how much he owed me. I told him how much he owed me, about 1800 bucks. And he paid me. So now I gotta call the insurance company and cancel the claim. But anyway, just so you guys know, um, he's alive and that just happened literally out of nowhere. Um, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss for words. I cannot believe the dude just called me out of nowhere. I'm alive. I'm not well, but I'm trying. By the way, how much do I owe you? Let me get this squared up. I sent him an invoice for $17.87 and some change. Paid it. Boom. Anyway, thanks for watching.